That is wonderful standing ovations before you said any word. <laughs> <laughs> that we will tell my opposition in Berlin. <laughs> Jim, thank you very much for this wonderful introduction. And dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, I can feel it is a wonderful atmosphere here at this special conference. And thank you very much for inviting me to give this keynote speech. My thanks go also to the wonderful city of San Francisco. Even far beyond the borders of San Francisco, we greatly appreciate your mayor's strong commitment to gay marriages and for the uh, fight of uh, gay and lesbian rights. And <laughs> I think that is not usual and that that's not normal and a great thank to the mayor of San Francisco. In, it is my pleasure to bring you and the city of San Francisco the very best wishes from Berlin, the German capital. I'm very pleased to be a guest in this wonderful metropolis. The city emanates an atmosphere of freedom, tolerance, and openness. This is something that our two cities have in common. In a nutshell, in spirit, San Francisco and Berlin are like a brother and sister but as a gender sensitive person, I won't speculate on who is the brother and who the sister. <laughs> San Francisco and Berlin could now enter into a rhetorical competition to establish which city is uh, most gay friendly. We could try to outdo one another by listing all the advantages that we offer to gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender people. However, I don't think it is our task today just to congratulate ourselves. Although, of course, every individual step we have fought for and achieved is a reason to be happy and proud. But we still have a long way to go. I come from a city with a great tradition of gay and lesbian pride. Just think of the famous sexologist Magnus Hirschfeld and the Golden Twenties, Berlin epi uh, epitomized freedom. However, we do not want to and should not forget how fragile our achievements are. We will never forget the relapse into barbarism at the start of the 1930s. We commemorate it in many places in Berlin. And it is highly symbolic that we have established a memorial of the murdered Jews of Europe in the city center, and that we have a separate memorial just opposite to commemorate the homosexuals who were persecuted and murdered. The permanent responsibility we now have can be traced back to the crimes committed in the Nazi era. It is a responsibility to ensure that the atrocities which took place in Germany at the same time can never happen again. It is a responsibility to ensure the remembrance of suffering and injustice is passed on like a relay baton to the next generation. It is a responsibility to permanently strengthen democracy, freedom, and tolerance. Human rights are not something only achieved once and then stored away securely in a treasure chest. Of course, guaranteed rights, constitutional articles and laws are indispensable. However, history teaches us that nothing lasts forever. You have to fight for human rights again and again especially where the rights of minorities are at stake. 